Hey, Kevin here, doing another video. Today we want to talk about all the records we use to sell our stereo equipment at Skylabs. Stick around. Okay, so let's talk records. Um, obviously these records have to sound really good and they need to showcase uh, your stereo system. Um, also, I don't want to play anything really offensive or something that's going to, you know, have somebody check out. You want them to be engaged. So preferably you're playing something that maybe they're familiar with and something they like. So um, you do need to kind of uh, cater what you're going to play to the person and to the, the sound system. Um, that being said, these are not, uh, if I were to make a list of the best sounding records of all time, this would not be the list. This is a list that hits a couple things, or these are records that um, they sound really good and most people know them. So uh, don't, don't take this as a, I think these are the best sounding records of all time. That's not what this list is. So let, let's just jump right in. And, and this one, um, I just watched a video of a guy that owns um, a place in Arizona called In The Groove. At least that's the name of his um, YouTube channel. Really enjoys videos. He did a shootout between, you know, six or seven copies of Supertramp, uh, Breakfast in America. And um, something he talked about in that, he hates the production and the recording of this. And I, I'm really surprised at that, honestly, because um, I think it sounds amazing. Uh, I think the drums and the toms in this record do a really good job of showing off a set of speakers. Um, I usually use uh, Take the Long Way Home. The only bummer about that track is you kind of have to fast forward it 30, 40 seconds. I don't remember. I, th I think that's, you know, 35 seconds, something like that, uh, to where the drums start coming in. And it gets really dynamic, and it really uh, it sounds good. He doesn't like they put um, some distortion. They overdrove the uh, overhead condenser microphones on the drum kit, and um, they did it as kind of a sound effect. And he hates it. Personally, to me, it doesn't bother me. Um, I I think this this record's incredible. So, if you ever want to show off your system, you're not going to go wrong with this one. All right, and these are not in order. Um, I'm just I'm just going through the ones that we kind of play on a regular ro rotation at the shop when somebody's checking out a stereo system. Um, this next one, uh, if, if if I feel like the person's a little bit more laid back, they're not going to be into something more hard rock or you know that type of thing. You can't go wrong with Sade. Period. Um, I think she kind of. Uh, transcends a lot of genres you know you get even let's say metal guys um, that like listening to Sade she's really in my opinion unique but um, the production on this stuff so well recorded and um, the music's great and you just put this on and let it go and um, everybody knows most of the music on this so Sade awesome so this next record, I kind of went back and forth on whether or not I was going to share the story because I have to name drop to do it. Um, and um, But it, 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 it's important to the story. So anyway, here we go. Um, it is Wildflowers, uh, Tom Petty. And I actually saw this tour. Uh, a friend of mine had an extra ticket, and so I went with her. It wasn't really... Um, I mean, I liked it when it first came out, but it wasn't really for me. I, I didn't spend a lot of time listening to it. And um, so it kind of, I, I don't know, I never, I don't think I even owned this until maybe a year ago or so. And anyway, so um, Social Distortion, uh, Mike Ness came into the shop. Uh, it seems like he stops in when they're in town and... Um, He's definitely a vintage audio guy, big props. Um, so he stops in and he's checking out these speakers and uh, he wanted to hear this. 
And he ended up, I think he listened to maybe six or seven uh, songs on this. You know, we kind of just left him alone. He just sat there in front of the set of speakers. And, um, you know, he talked about it afterwards and how much he loved the production on it and stuff like that. So uh, after that, I, um, I started, you know, listening to it a bit more. And he's definitely, you know, 100% correct. The instrumentation on this, the, uh, the drum sounds, uh, the vocal sounds, everything is so well done. Uh, one caveat with this record, um, if you've got speakers that aren't made to handle deep bass, this will show. Um, this will this will show that. This will what I call fart out a speaker pretty easy, especially uh, uh, tracks like "Oh, It's Good to Be King." There's a lot of deep bass in there that um, if a woofer doesn't like going that low. It, you're gonna know it so you kind of got to be careful on with this one um, what you play it on but I agree with Mike Mike if you listen if you're listening um, thank you because uh, I, I use this all the time it's an amazing piece of recorded music yeah all right and next let's see oh yeah well I, I could have picked three records by this band but I, I stuck with one and I don't think this is going to be any shock um, and that Dire Straits everything they recorded is so good um, you know it, it amazes me how you know I, I think most people agree besides Salt and the Swing this was their you know their big huge uh, mainstream success and even uh, their earlier records before they had big budgets sound incredible and that goes to show you uh, a lot of you know it's not all about engineering and it's not all it, it, a lot of it has to do with the, the players and they're just so good that um, even with lower budget recordings they still sound incredible and um, this one is no different um, so far away you put that on uh, and then just let it go if, if, if you're grabbing the customer's attention or whoever you're auditioning the system for you know let let money for nothing kick in because in my opinion I don't know if there's anything that's ever been recorded that emulates a live uh, you know an arena or stadium rock show feel in a recording as in that opening sounds like the lights have just gone down um, in a stadium and you're you're hearing some guitars kind of you know uh guitars just threw on his guitar and hit an open chord and um that type of thing and it, it does it really really well you know it makes the hair stand up on my arms every time i every time i crank this up and play uh, the in, the intro to money for nothing um uh, and i don't i don't I don't think there's any big bass notes in there. You, I think you can play this pretty much on anything, and uh, it sounds amazing. So, if you don't own it, uh, there's something wrong with you. Uh, okay, final one. And everybody that comes to the shop uh, knows this next one. It's the last one, and we play this all the time. I am so sick of it. I actually, one of our techs, um, well, the two techs, we had two for a while and I remember coming in and one guy's like I woke up singing Babylon Sisters um, Steely Dan because I play it so much and it's you know it's not my it's not my favorite Steely Dan record um, I would I would more lean towards Asia uh, for songs I like the songs on Asia better but this recording is so good. You know, Asia is a little bit rolled off. Uh, some of the detail is, it's, it, it's just got a little haze to it. Uh, the high end isn't as brilliant. And maybe some people think this is sterile. Um, but man, it is so clean. All the, all the instrumentation, uh, Bernard Purdy's drum playing, I mean, is iconic on Babylon Sisters. And um, that's the great thing about Babylon Sisters is you really have everything all in one. You know, you've got um, great drums, bass line, guitar, 
female vocals, um, brass section. You've even got a, a chime in the first 30 or so seconds in the, in the left channel, I believe, that, um, you know, you play that with like a really nice set of speakers with a nice tweeter and it just, it, it's right there in front of you. So um, I probably owe this record um, some money for how many sets of speakers we have sold using this. And I definitely owe our techs and uh, Brian, sorry guys, I know I killed it, but it's for the better good. Um, so yeah, those that's really what we use um, to uh, to sell stereo equipment. I don't think you can go wrong with any of them. Uh, hopefully, hopefully there's something in there maybe you haven't heard. And if you haven't, uh, give your system a, a run with any of that stuff and um, let us know in the comments what you think. It's tried and true. We sold a lot of stereos using this stuff. So cool. Uh, yeah. Hope you got something out of it. Thanks. Hey, so thanks for watching that video. Uh, really appreciate it. Hopefully you got something out of it. Uh, we want to continue doing this. And if you if do us a favor, huge favor, hit the like button, subscribe, um, leave a comment. It, it does wonders for us. I really appreciate it. Thank you.